good morning good afternoon good evening friends so today in today's class we will be discussing about uh, how to depict clouds i mean we will not discuss about any specific clouds what we are looking for is uh, how to depict some generic clouds what are the key points that you have to pay attention to when you are making clouds so that the viewer thinks it is a convincing sky so basically you have to pay uh, to certain aspects to make a convincing sky to the viewer when you make a sky uh, i would suggest uh, don't go for specific clouds because if you go for i mean copying and recreating a specific cloud so you are uh, very likely to get into uh, exactly copying the contours and uh, trying to trying to make it exactly like the reference image which will make the clouds very very rigid means very very tight i mean not, not very fluid so the, the the clouds are convincing when they you make it you make them very fluid i mean uh, very free flowing floating kind of things so if you make it very tight very precise drawing and all it will look like some hard edge uh, uh, three dimensional stuff uh, which usually doesn't look like they are floating they 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 you know it may appear that they have very large mass and then it will look like some th- just uh, some other objects it won't it won't be a beautiful looking sky so you be free when you start making clouds so what are the things you uh, pay attention to when you make the cloud so let us just pay attention to the key things okay let us make some drawing here okay hope i hope you can see this uh, drawing so let us make a horizon here okay so <coughs> from here to here from here to here you can make clouds right so as you know anything which is closer to the horizon will be much away from us and uh, that will look smaller in size right so what what does that mean is that a cloud which is very very near to the horizon is very far from us so what how it will look like is it will look like very small things a small suggestion will do for these kind of clouds so something like this as it goes closer to the horizon it will be smaller and narrower right but as it goes above they they may be more closer to us so they will look bigger in shape and don't make it exactly like a, any a kind of Uh, circle or something because these clouds are very uh, kind of uh, naturally formed nobody uh, precisely made it with a design so it all formed as a result of uh, atmospheric conditions so it will have uh, uh, random shapes but all these shapes as they move away as they move closer to the horizon as they come down towards the horizon they will come they will become smaller and smaller and further further the gap between the clouds these gaps usually they will get smaller and smaller because they are reaching towards the horizon and their their size also will be less and the relative gap between this will also be less it is something like you you say for example you are making an electric pole here the nearest electric pole will be small uh, will be bigger and the next electric pole will be probably little smaller in size narrower and it will be it will be smaller in size and you see the next electric pole will not have this much distance it will have a lesser distance okay the next will have further lesser distance something like this is how it vanishes it diminishes in the same way the clouds which are top which is much away from the horizon which in fact will be closer to the viewer okay so that will be bigger and their gap 
their gap will be smaller i mean will be larger and as they come down towards the horizon these gaps between like the way the gaps between electric poles are smaller and smaller as it comes to goes towards the approaches to the horizon this gap also will be usually lesser and lesser when it goes or approaches the horizon so these are the things you you may pay attention to to make the convincing clouds and also the clouds also if made this way the clouds also can help in getting the appropriate depth like the way this if you if you pay attention to the gap in the size for electric poles it will help in creating the depth if you the same way if you pay similar attention to the cloud that also will help you in getting the clouds right so let us make some clouds in that way uh, just with some uh, charcoal powder just i wanted to show what i really meant let us make the same horizon again okay let this be the horizon and uh, i am taking little bit of charcoal powder this is a uh, little bit of charcoal powder which i just took from it my charcoal pencil i just took a knife and uh, then uh, took off some of the charcoal powder from the charcoal pencil so what i am planning to do is from this you take a small tissue and take little bit of uh, charcoal powder on this okay and i am just trying to make suggest some bigger mass here not very precise shape and all and i am making little smaller mass as it comes down and little bit further smaller and smaller narrower like this and as it goes big at the top i am making it little bigger see uh, this is not a very I, i wouldn't say this is the most uh, beautiful cloud that you may see in the world but this is how you kind of uh, make pay attention to the size and all as it goes down you make it narrower and narrower the clouds may be connected it may not be connected it's all random even when you create the space you you may ensure that the these are not evenly spaced all over the place okay so you can have see this is this is how uh, this is what i meant really so these clouds are reasonably bigger in shape these clouds are reasonably bigger in shape and uh, as it comes down you make it narrower and narrower and it is much narrow when it comes to the this one right and the space is re- i mean it is this gap between the clouds try to i mean reduce but in a random way not very accurate or evenly distributed way once you have this one probably we can you can make you can complete the image with some distant uh, whatever whatever landscape element you want to keep you can you can make the landscape complete you can make a tree or whatever i'm not precisely drawing it i'm just suggesting something you can make a lot of stuff here and, and complete the image right so this could probably be a convincing sky so these are the things you need to pay attention to when you make clouds don't make any hard edges try to avoid hard edges as much as possible it is always better it will be very interesting if you keep some edges soft and some um, uh, amount of minimal amount of edges hard for the clouds but it is not that easy to do so you need little bit of practice to get it done
right so now we will get into painting the same thing is in watercolors right so now we'll do some clouds with watercolors so here what i have is here is my palette so for this exercise mostly i may use is cerulean blue little bit of uh, raw sienna for a sunny sky we prefer i prefer to use raw sienna and cerulean blue and uh, for clouds to make it little darker i might use some touches of cobalt blue or little bit of violet or i might even use little bit of burnt amber right it all it all depends upon uh, the dynamic decision i take so what for the first exercise what i would be doing is i will make some sunny sky and some clouds the clouds will be made using the concept that we have discussed just in the previous uh, discussion right so <clears throat> what i am using is a quarter sheet watercolor paper which is stuck with a tape onto my board the board is kept at around 30 degree angle so that uh, the top edge is little raised and the bottom edge is little down so that when you apply some washes here the water will flow down from top to bottom that is that is the way you usually keep the watercolor papers right and i have stuck a tape here so that we have two partitions made and we will try to make two examples two demonstrations right first we will we will make it here a sunny sky kind of thing okay so for the brushes i might use some uh, this is a reasonably big round brush for the bigger clouds for the smaller clouds i might use a smaller size round brush this both are synthetics with some amount of uh, spring action uh, it it should the the thing is irrespective of the brands you should it should hold a lot of water as well as it should have some kind of spring action and for smaller brushes it is always better if you have a good tip okay a very tapered brush right so let us make a, a sunny sky for sunny sky what i would make is let us make uh, a big sky and a small piece of land here because we want some clouds since we want to demonstrate clouds i wanted a larger sky and maybe i will make this much as a land area this one right so this is a dynamic demonstration we don't have any specific plan or drawing so the objective is getting the clouds done okay so if you want to make a soft edges for the clouds soft edges are created with wet on wet application of paints wet on wet means you are applying wet paint mix on a wet paper so we we'll have to ensure that this is wet so to make it as wet what i would do is i am taking little bit of uh, yellow ochre and i am making a very pale wash of yellow ochre okay you see it is very it is very watery okay and i am just trying from the bottom the bottom area this paper has some uh, problem i think this specific lot which i took sometimes you will find that some of the paper may have issues so here i it doesn't really matter i am just making it wet keep applying until it is wet the paper should be wet enough you might think that it is much yellowish at this point but you see when you when it really dries it will all be all right i don't want the yellow to mix here on the palette with the blue 
so I'm just taking off this. Lot of water and lot of paint. I'm mixing, and you make it little faster so that. Now I am just mixing. See this part I don't have to explain because this is something which you already know. The washes, watercolor washes. I am just trying to make it a little bit more. It might turn little, uh, what, do you, what do you call it is, very slight bit of greenish but not too much I think. Okay. Let us continue this and maybe I will make it make this area a little bit of water body so that I am using a lot of water ok this is purely what I call it as cobalt um, cerulean blue and cerulean blue and raw sienna I have used for until now ok now we have to wait until this gets slightly dry see now we have to apply the make the clouds here ok so to make the clouds it, if it is too wet if the surface is too wet then it may happen that you the clouds will very quickly fall down and you may not get you may get very very much clouds which is too much merged with the sky so you may not want to do that so wait until this is say maybe uh, half dry okay so uh, you cannot really judge if it is half dry or 60% dry or etc but you you have to judge and uh, you you make some judgment that the wetness is sufficient or not and if it is uh, you you judge and then try okay if it is if if the result is not what you expected you make uh, corrections in your judgment going forward so that is how we learn you make judgment make errors learn from those errors and repeat so here i am making some cobalt blue and uh, this violet i am mixing okay i wanted some violet violetish cloud and let us see and with the large application I am making some some shapes for the clouds you will you will soon see that this will get merging and uh, don't go for any specific size but make it larger where if when it is at the top make it smaller and uh, narrower maybe when it when it is going towards the horizon so as I uh, now when I, when I go further I will make it little more narrower and closer the clouds see that way you can get some amount of uh, what you call it as depth also don't make it very precise or very very much predictable okay. now let it dry you in watercolor uh, certain things may not be convincing when you really at the point of view making it but after some time when the things get settled and the soft wet on wet merging happens you will soon find that things are becoming all right right so this is how you make the clouds now you will have a tendency to correct it you may think that okay this shape would have been better if this was slightly I mean roundish now if you go if you go and make that correction you have to be careful you have to be always uh, cautious 
that if it is dry beyond a point and then you make correction the new correction new corrected area will be more wet and since it is more wet some of the pigment from the underlying cloud will be pulled down and you will you will get unexpected or unwanted result so be contented for some i mean some time and see how does it look if it is really bad go for another one but i am sure that once it is dry it will look better so have patience right so i would say this cloud i am i am okay with this cloud uh, we are not sp uh, discussing about specific clouds and how to make the best looking clouds but it's a generic suggestion of clouds how we, how we can make it okay now maybe i will try to do something on this water body so this is not a topic of the lesson but maybe i'll just try to make some uh, ripples or something so that it looks like some kind of a water this is a topic of uh, future lessons but i'm just cover i mean i just wanted to make some something out of this that's it okay let it dry okay we'll wait until it until this gets dry okay all right now let us make if we can make some uh cloudy sky here okay let us try to make some cloudy sky and on at this part so i mean cloudy sky what i meant is uh, rainy cloud rain i mean some some kind of it is about to rain or just finished raining still it might rain etc so uh, i wanted to change the mood of the 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 this particular painting by changing the color so here i will be using the colors probably what the colors i'll be using is same uh, maybe cobalt blue and rather than uh, cerulean blue i may use cobalt blue violet and this burnt amber to make it little little dullish blue because you know how the rainy cloud looks like it is not very bright in color so we have we may have to dull it with some color so i use burnt amber in this particular example let us see how does it look like see i mean the color changes little bit. it dulls down little bit okay you see how how the color looks like see if you want to know how how does the color look like on paper what you do is you just to try to push away some of the colors from the puddle some of the mixes then you will find some narrow layer of paint at the palette edge you see here here it is very dark but here here as i move the brush you see here this is very light because there is a very thin layer of mix lying on the palette that is probably the way the paint will look like on the paper because on the paper we will not have a collection of an accumulation of paint it will be very thin layer so what i what i am planning to do is i am i am trying to make a big wash first because it is not a clean sky so i want a little brownish wash here so you will understand when i make it what i will explain it what i really intend into it so okay so i'll take a little bit more okay so what i am planning is very pale dull wash of some earthy blue brown or whatever you call it as you know what color it is i'm just trying to make this is the base color i wanted to keep for this scene because just making a flat wash kind of thing on this see 
this should create some mode of uh, rainy mode for this entire work okay, if you don't know how to make flat wash we will uh, uh, you can ref we that is a topic of another class in the session uh, you can refer to that okay now it is wet uh, this is a this is very wet now it is neither very warm nor very cool it is some kind of a, a neutral sort of thing uh, okay so that will create a misty atmosphere that is that is what i wanted to make now here so now we have to make the clouds so we'll have to make it little thicker because it's already wet make a little bit darker mix of this cobalt blue violet and little bit of burnt dumper see this is not a standard mix i am talking about this is how i i make it most of the time right so it is up to you uh, you try out different colors and then so i think it is already uh, dry beyond a point so we'll have to keep see the this will be when i say it is very rainy you will find that it will be full of clouds basically so the gap will be very less in fact i'm just trying to pay the same kind of uh, attention whatever we discussed okay so mostly it is filled with clouds now there is minor gaps narrow when it comes to the bottom okay it's still very likely to rain so let it dry let us see how does it look like what i would do is i will just sprinkle some water just to create another kind of texture which might add to the illusion of it being very cloudy don't do lot of rework it will spoil let it be like this let let us see how does it turn out okay now once it is dry we will see what can be done in the background if you really want let us make some background also since this is mostly filled with this cloudy rainy cloudy color i want the foreground also to match with that so i am just trying to make some 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 foreground with that maybe some distance hills or something there let us see how does it look like to see how does it look see these are all experiments you have to keep experimenting and uh, learn right so there are other ways of making clouds as well which we will uh, probably discuss in the next uh, video if felt necessary but the other way is that you make it make this wash 
and lift it out with uh, tissue paper we will see if we can make another video for that as well now let this be dry for the time being we will see once it is dry alright this is not uh, very much dry still but probably we can do something here and by that time this will get dry now at this point I am always uh, I used to think what I can make out of this what I can make out of this so probably I think I will rather make it also as a kind of water body rather than uh, a piece of land because this has this looks more like a water than a land, piece of land so to accentuate to that what I do is I just I don't have fingernail but if you have fingernail you just drag a, piece, a line straight line so that it looks like kind of edge of a water body okay something like this okay let it didn't turn out that good but it it is still okay we'll see how best we can do it otherwise what you can do is you can take a piece of an, a knife and then just so that it looks like some water body okay now let us make something here so this should be uh, reasonably I mean straightforward for you so we wanted to make some uh, some piece of maybe this will make some piece of land so how do I make how do we make a piece of land here is I'm planning to make some some hills here okay and here some piece of land let us see how how we make it how we can make it so i want the hills to have a softer edge so what i do is i'm taking some clean water and i am just softly applying it here i'm not applying any force if you apply force some of the settled sky or cloud might get pushed off so i don't want that to happen so whatever is the mix here so i'm applying some violet and blue so that it looks like a distant hill or something okay really they are I I think we made a mistake I thought this is the horizon line but by mistake we painted the hill like this we could have made it a little bit down but anyway that shouldn't be a problem see this is the issue when you make something some dynamic decision without proper drawing but that will help in getting your imagination built up well so what I am doing is, maybe it is there, I am just suggesting some, some, something. Taking a narrow, narrower brush. See, when, if you are doing following along, you, you can draw something first and then do. But here, what I am thinking is, some suggestion of some fields or something I am I am trying to make. Okay, with some narrow brushes and just maybe some some kind of field, paddy field or something. I think this direction line should have been, should have been like this. You should always be thinking about the perspective line. 
don't worry about all these things it will all look good you have to have patience you should have faith most of the watercolors are failed not because of your issues in the drawing and other things most of the biggest reason i think is your confidence see these things could be later covered with something okay can all cover these things with some trees or something this is not a big issue see think whenever you make a mistake think what best can be done to cover that see there is a cross line here i don't want that to highlight so maybe i'll make some kind of a tree here some trees here also and here we will have some shadows or some bushes etc so that they will get covered it may be a fix you may think that it is some kind of a fix that we are doing but it's okay see you should enjoy the process you should not worry too much for the distant stuff you make it lighter in tone for the nearby stuff you make it darker in tone okay little I think the hand is perfectly all right. Now, this is an a round narrow brush i am just making some suggestion of the leaves for this see these are not big trees anyway some bushes or something here okay maybe some bushes you can have here also we will have we will discuss about trees going forward but right now i am just using uh, this brush to suggest some leaves that's it you can always go for the trees lesson and then learn more about suggesting trees see these are just suggestions not very precise looking trees okay suggestions are enough maybe we will make some people also here the 
these things up these are just some suggestions so that they should look like something okay so we are done with this okay now we'll have to think of what can be what we can do with this so this is almost like water body cloudy water body scene now so let us quickly make some suggestions like the way we discussed for the previous one i am applying some plain water here and whatever mix we have made earlier cobalt blue violet i am using the same colors so that what i wanted is something like a monochrome approach i wanted a monochrome kind of thing here very soft with soft edges could be some distant foliages or something for which you already have some suggestion of you already have some su suggestion of the reflections here you can just enhance it okay now this area may be little bit of piece of land again little darker color blue see what here we i wanted is some piece of land okay some piece of land here i am using some dry brush approach kind of things we will all learn these the different approaches going forward okay now this we have discussed described in detail about the clouds these things are something that we can discuss in detail in the later sessions so maybe to make it little bit of interesting let us make some kind of boat or something again with the same kind of colors okay same colors drawing of boards and all those things will be something that we can discuss in detail later going forward but now here we are just some boards okay some boards and maybe there shadows okay maybe another boat here the boat here okay. some some change color change i am looking for here i am applying some some lighter color here so that it is it is having some depth okay now let us make some additional hints see these are some imaginative process that comes as an impulse to you when you do painting okay so you will have to develop that you will have to develop that by painting imaginatively quite a bit of times some people are also around here
I think we are, this is not a perfect particular work, I would say, but this is how we could build up something and randomly add stuff to it and then make something that is convincing and creating stuff. So that's it for today's uh, lesson. I would request you to practice similar approach, not exactly the same thing because your clouds will be different, your foreground works may be different, you may have a, a different idea, but keep trying uh, different types of clouds with whatever we have discussed and try to complete the try to complete it with uh, adding your own imaginative elements to it so that you in parallel develop your watercolor painting skills and your creative or imaginative skills if you have any questions or comments let me know in your in the comments raise any questions to me i will try to respond as early as possible uh, I may, I might be a little busy now, sometime, but I will surely try to get back to you as early as possible. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you have benefited from it. We'll see you in the next class. Thank you very much. Now let us take out the tape. Okay. Then. be careful when you take out the tape it might peel off some of your paper and your work, work might get disturbed so this is the work that we have done so we could have done lot of minor touches to enhance these things so to make it look more beautiful for example if you just make some touch of red or orange You could have made these guys faces okay you could have made it little bit more interesting just with that okay I made it little orangish to make it a little bit more highlighting. Okay. It's all different. It's all up to you whether you want to do it or not. You could add a touch of white to the border to make it little more highlighting. Okay. It's all up to you. So that there is some kind of highlight here. Um, where, how much you want to highlight, where you want to stop, it's all up to you. Okay. Thanks for watching. See you in the next class.